if I was growing up in this time as a child, my choice of food would be different. I probably would not be making sweet grass, would not be making these baskets at all. I'd go and be a scientist, a world <laughs> and famous scientist or something. You know, my hands are very worn and it, it causes, you know, circulation, poor circulation in your hand after a while. So you gotta deal with all of that. It's not a fun job, but the results of a basket is the thing that keeps you coming back again and again. After you see where you've created something so beautiful, then the whole world love what you're doing because they find it beautiful as well. And that's the inspiration you know, for going on and on every day. I have been fortunate to have my work in very um, distinguished collections. I think they're all distinguished, I should say, but in uh, like Prince Charles on one of my baskets. I had dinner with him when he was here in 1990. The Empress from Japan, I actually shook hands with them. They, the Empress came because she wanted, came to Charleston because she had read about me in National Geographic's December 1987 and said that when she visited the United States, she would come to Charleston and she did. Princess Caroline, I didn't get to meet her, but she was given one of my baskets when she was here. Collections that's, that I'm proud to have my work, but mostly in museums all over this country, as well as many private collections. So my work has gone very, very far. I once had a basket that went to the Vatican for an exhibition yeah, in 1984. And uh, so that's a lot that I've, you know, that I've, more than what I've ever thought about would happen. <laughs> that would happen with my work. I never dreamt of any of this. There's always a difficulty every day because, again, these grasses are not wet to work with. They're woven dried. And that's the process that have been used for centuries because it gives a true weave the basket must be strong to uh, hold objects. And people use them to go to the garden to collect vegetables. Or they use as sewing baskets or fruit baskets on a table. So they're woven very tightly. And that's the challenge for every day's work that you must be willing to, you know, to take on. You know, we were taught that these baskets should go on for generation after generation to make them very beautiful and very strong that you would enjoy them throughout your lifetime and then the next generation would get to use them. And even collectors who collect these baskets, they have them in their families for generations as well. There are some examples of these baskets at the Smithsonian American Museum, History Museum. Some pieces are dated 1800s. And this in the museum here in Charleston, the Charleston Museum, which is the oldest museum in this country. They have some baskets, a big collection of these baskets from the plantation era. And they're from the early uh, 1900s, late 1800s, and it's right there intact. So it explains what I'm talking about, that these are made to go on for generation after generation. The color doesn't change once it's dried, it becomes more beautiful and beautiful all the time. 